Kia ora everybody, welcome back. We're here with Annette Sykes now. Annette has been in the news very recently with her involvement in the formation of a new party, Te Mana Party, with Hone Harawira at the helm. And uh, we're going to be finding out a little bit about her and her motivation today. Kia ora Annette, could you please start by giving us a little bit of a background into who you are? Mm, okay, um, my name is Annette Te'i Maima Sykes. The um, Sykes part is English-Irish. My grandmother was a Francis and um, her husband was a uh, Sykes that uh, she met. I think they've been here over 106 years, the Sykes family. They were both staunch Catholics, quite interesting, an English Catholic marrying an Irish Catholic family. Um, and they both ended up um, as families at Otamarako. And on my mother's side, um, I'm a Morehu and a Fata, and Otamarako is central to our family because that's one of the principal marae that I affiliate to. So um, my grandmother's family, um, the Morehu and the Vuko family, they're quite a very um, well, well-known family at Otamarako. And my Pākehā family were farming out there on land that had been confiscated originally from my Ngāti Mākino family. So two generations later, my mum and dad met. He was a farmer, my mum was a school teacher, and we're the product of that union. So um, I grew up in a place called Kawarau. Um, I went to Kawarau North School and Kawarau Intermediate School and then Kawarau College. I did my school C year there, and in the sixth form I won a scholarship to the United World College of Southeast Asia in Singapore, and ended up there and was chairperson of the school there, and ended up eventually doing a summer school stint in Cambridge University, um, looking at what my options might be, and while I was over there I decided to return to New Zealand. Ended up at Victoria University studying economics and um, public admin actually, and then the Springbok tour happened, and I met uh, people like Sir Jackson and Hannah Jackson and the Te Reo Māori Society activists and the rest is history. I moved from an economics major to a legal major and eventually transferred to Auckland University where I did a law degree up there. Left there in 1984 and I've been back here in Aotearoa since 1985 in various law firms. The first one was Trevor Boothland Partners. After that firm, Rangi Tawira and Naik. And then more recently with this firm, Aurere, um Law, where I'm a principal partner. So that's me. I'm a mum of two kids. I'm separated from my first husband and have a very loving partner now from Tuhoi. Kia ora, he wahine no Tarawa, a woman from Te Arawa, returned here now. You've had a, a wonderful career in law. You're a very distinguished lawyer, very well known. Some might say, well, some have lots of titles for you. How would you title yourself? Oh, I think I'm very much um, an activist lawyer. I um, see injustice and I try and find ways to um, find solutions to that injustice. I'm proud of that. Um, one of my first cases was the Te Reo Māori claim to the Waitangi Tribunal and at that stage our reo was not recognised as an official language of New Zealand or even in the universities and in that case I think I was the first Māori woman to go to the Waitangi Tribunal as a lawyer and we were fortunate in succeeding to get recommendations to the Crown which has eventually seen the establishment of um, a number of initiatives, including Māori Television, uh, the 22 Māori radio stations, Kura Kaupapa, Kohanga Reo and Whare Wānanga. And, um, you know, those all came from a protest movement around the failure to honour our reo, and now it's become an intrinsic part of modern Aotearoa New Zealand. So, you know, those things are immeasurable um, outcomes because they're so significant in the ways that a small win in the tribunal created a huge social um, change, uh, both for the country but in particular for Māori families who see pride in their children being bilingual. Tēnā mm. koe, very distinguished indeed. One of the things that has come to the forefront now is your move towards supporting the Mana Party. Why mm-hmm. have you chosen to do that? Oh, there's a couple of reasons. Um, it comes back to what I started today with, actually. Um, Otsu Marako is deep to my heart. Uh, the Raupatu line, the confiscation line in 1862, was drawn right next door to our marae. So our lands were confiscated um, as early as 1867 by virtue of the New Zealand Settlement Act and the imposition of that confiscation line. So my grandmother and my mother and myself, we've all been brought up to fight for the return of that land which was wrongfully taken by the Crown and vested in soldiers' grants to many of the New Zealand settlers that had fought either with the militia or with the New Zealand forced, uh, military forces at that period. And my mother in particular has been a claimant for that. 
And in 2004, when Helen um, Clark decided after the Ngāti Apa case that they would take that land, my mother um, was very much opposed to it and she actively encouraged us to protest. So we formed part of the first process movement, which was really initiated by Ngāti Kaununu, because what we saw happening in 2004 was further confiscation of the same land from Maketu to Marata, which was for our family, is our traditional um, ancestral lands, which we've just been fighting for. Um, and you know the, that Helen Clark uh, uh, confiscated those lands, invested them in the Crown, and then the Māori Party was burst, and we thought that the Māori Party would actually um, not only repeal that wrongful piece of legislation, but replace it, or look to a process to replace it, which would alleviate the injustice. But what's happened is that the Māori Party, of course, formed a relationship with the ACT Party and the National Party, which I struggled with from the outset. But then they this year, notwithstanding all of the concerns, you know, our iwi here in Tarawa, seven of the eight iwi made submissions against um, the National Party solution. And yet our Member of Parliament, Tūrero Flavel, who's a friend of mine, uh, chose to ignore the iwi that have lands that are being confiscated by this legislation too and went ahead and supported it. I saw that as a huge betrayal. It was a very personal thing for me because I was the one of the ones that nominated Tūrero when he was um, first cons- cons- considered to be appropriate to stand in Parliament and I felt betrayed by it. I actually went to a meeting and told him that because I could not bear to see our land confiscated again. There's no other greater issue than me than your Tūranga Waiwai. And, you know, in our family, where we've had 160 years, 170 years fighting for it, to have it returned and then again taken was an absolute slap in the face to us. And the fact our pleas were um, ignored um, without him even formally meeting with us also added salt to the wound. So that's why um, I'm attracted to something different. I think the Māori Party's lost its way and we need to do something different. Okay. And in Te Arawa here, in, in Waiariki, uh, you have mentioned before that you'd quite like to get motivate voters that haven't voted in the past to come and to vote with the Māori, uh, Te Mana Party. Sorry. How would you intend to do that? Well, that's, I think, that's my key principal role. I've been a long-time social justice campaigner, so I've got very good networks, huge networks in Whānau Apanui, Tūhoi Whakatohia, and um, in Te Arawa and Tauranga Moana. What I want to do is, firstly, get organisers and communities. And um, one organiser can have 10 people, and I want them all to locate 100 people each, one, and one, find out, are they on the roll? If they're not on the roll, why they aren't on the roll and to facilitate a process so that they can enrol or at least understand why it's important they consider uh, voting. And young people especially are completely turned off. I know I, I represent a lot of them in court. They think the system is a system. It's a one-way track to ignoring their issues and those are the things that I would like to um, change. Um, young people, though, don't listen to Annette Sykes. We're in that middle-aged group, so they, we need some young ones. So one of the things that I want to attract is um, the tikitanis of the world. You know, funny how you say FTP once mm-hmm. and everybody listens to you. Mm-hmm. So we need some models that young people can um, attune to, to um, explain to them the importance. Then, of course, I want them to look at the political attractiveness of a party that fights for um, the poor. Because in this region here, a lot of our young uh, young people, 16 to 25, I think they say that there's 60% of them that are only on transitional kind of jobs. They have um, kiwi fruit jobs or, you know, very seasonal work. They need um, to be educated about why they're in this poverty situation. The systemic reality is that we have certain processes in government and to try and move to a party, which I hope the mana movement emerges as, which deals with um, trying to alleviate um, those realities and to find alternatives to um, the poverty trap that many of our young people have found themselves in. But the third thing is this is their country and I'm really... um, I'm an advocate of us loving our kāinga and loving our home. I'm an environmentalist in that respect. I love looking after our lake. I want them to walk around and pick up the rubbish. I want them to be as concerned as me and my children are about the weed in the lake and the fact that there's no frogs anymore. Those kinds of things are things that I really like. 
I want them to enjoy going fishing and um, doing those things that I do and be aware that if we don't make changes in the environment now, those things that are distant memories for me will actually be completely um, invisible in the realities of um, mokopunas of tomorrow. So those are the kinds of things I want young people. And, you know, the other way to to, to attract them is um, I'm a rugby netball fan, so I'm going to have to try and look at some rugby netball heroes and heroines to try and get them to, you know, come on board. I, I, I was trying to figure out a way to get Sonny Bill Williams to do a, a mud fight with some hot chicky mm. babe in Rotorua because I'm sure if we got him here, there'd be a number of volunteers for mm. that kind of approach. You know, that's the reality. Our kids will warm to that. I know my sons would. Kia ora, Annette. Well, we hope you've enjoyed that. We'll see you again after the break.